Oh, hi. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hello. My name is Katie. And today I'm going to be reacting to episode two of season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. I am so excited to get into this again. I do have to talk about a few things from last week, a few like corrections, a few things that I noticed after I watched it for the first time. I was very excited watching the first episode last week. And sometimes I miss things as we all do when we watch things for the first time. So the first thing that I want to talk about is is Ghetto. And the very first scene that we saw of him in episode one, where he's like in that alleyway and he's repeating like the whole exercise absorb. I thought when I first watched that, that that was like something he was doing in secret. Little did I actually realize that it's that's actually his curse technique. I don't know how I didn't know that or if it's like mm, if it was explained in season one, maybe my memory is just a sieve as it usually is. But it seemed like that opening scene is actually after the events of season two or at, at this part that we're in this arc that we're in. And when I was editing, I realized like his whole like demeanor seems shifted in that scene than it does in the rest of the episode. Like his eyes look more tired. He does look more villainous if that's a good way to describe it. So yeah, there was a little bit of confusion from me in the first episode about like Ghetto's curse technique and like what it means, but I'm still very curious as to how he actually turned evil. And that kind of comes into like my second thing of, it's not really a correction, but I guess just a follow on from last week is like, you know, he, Ghetto seems to be in a place in this arc where, you know, he understands that Jujutsu sorcerers are supposed to protect normal people and I'm like curious as to what it actually is that makes him change. It makes him change his mind and, you know, turn the way he did at the end of JJK Zero. Like what made him so hungry for power? I do wonder if it is his curse technique that had some you know, influence on his mind or on him as a person to just turn corrupt and like want to pursue that? Was it events that happened? Maybe it's the events of this actual arc that we see that maybe changed his mind because we also see that Gojo is of a very different mindset than what we know him as in season one. So yeah, I'm very curious about these things. And basically we understand that Gojo and Ghetto are on this mission together to, to protect Tengen's new vessel so he can continue his like immortality thing. And we know that there's different groups that are involved in wanting to assassinate the vessel because of either religious reasons or money reasons. And that's where Toji comes into it. And Toji basically is all down for assassinating the vessel for money. And we kind of got a little bit of indication, you know, that he took his wife's name. So he's Toji for Shigeru. And I'm excited to see more of him. Very excited for many reasons. But yeah, I think that's everything that there was, I was just, I was overwhelmed. I was excited from the first episode and, you know, forgot some, some details. But I, I, I'm I'm on the right track. And I do have to also talk about just seeing Gojo and Ghetto have these interactions in this season is just so exciting to me. And I know there's going to be people that differ in opinion with this, but I am a Sado Sugu shipper and I just see a lot of these hints of that. Whether you find them, whether you ship them like romantically or you just see them as like the best of best of friends, I think there's something to be said with their relationship and how strong it is and how intense their feelings are. And that's pretty prominent through season one and through JJK Zero. And I'm excited to see how that actually, you know, started to develop in Gojo's past arc. So I'm excited to, you know, see more of it. Anyways, before we get into it, if you do want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. You can also join my Patreon where I do upload uncut timer reactions of these episodes every single week. So if you want to see my full uncut reaction, as long as you have your own copy of the episode to sync along with mine, then yeah, feel free to join. But without further ado, let's just get into episode two of season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. Who is this? Because we left off the last episode them basically like, like Gojo starting the fight. Oh. Is this after? He's still in the, in the building where everything blew up. Oh, he is. This is after. Because that's the vessel. Oh, 
Let's kiss. That must be Ghetto's, like, little curse guy. He just wants a kiss. I love that he's just relaxing, making himself at home with a cup of tea. <laughs> Not the licks. How did Gojo get on? Not that we even need to ask, but... He took a selfie! <laughs> he fucked him up. He, like, actually killed him. And he said in the last episode, I don't want to get in trouble, so don't make me kill you. Is he gonna get in trouble for that? She in. <gasps> I don't know what that noise was. Sorry. Oh my fuck at him! <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. So he's trying to wear Gojo down before he fights him. He is- oh my- oh my god, are you joking? Oh! Shut up! They mentioned Megumi? Dot of the year over here. Your son? Holy shit. Okay, so, I mean, Toji is not winning dad of the year at any time, but he is winning daddy of the year. <laughs> Someone take me out, I swear. Fuck's sake, just sedate me. Someone on Twitter pointed out, I think somewhere in this opening, you, yeah, that bit, you can see Ghetto through Gojo's point of view. And if I do say so, Ghetto looks just like, really fucking cool and amazing in Gojo's point of view. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> She's got brain cells. They don't, basically. <laughs> oh my god, he looks so cool. Oh my god, oh, she can- she's got moves! Oh, her name's Riko. <laughs> you have the- f your bangs are weird! <laughs> Not his bangs. Oh my god, what are they doing to her? Oh, the fuck is that? Bang, guys. Bang, guy. <laughs> Not saying that right in front of her. Oh, Gojo. Does she know what she's in for? Is that... They're not even listening to her. Is that how it works, though? Like... Do they basically have to act like her, like, bodyguards going to school and everything? Fulfill her demands. They're gonna hate that. <laughs> Gojo especially. That is grim. And sad. I wonder how the vessel is actually chosen. Like, 
Why this random schoolgirl? Like, you know? Does that have something to do with it? Aww. Ghetto is so sweet, are you kidding? Someone on Twitter also pointed out that they're like convinced that Gojo's love language is physical touch. And I just would, I would just happen to agree, do you know what I mean? Is he still doing bets? This is gonna be harder than than they imagined, I think. Oh. oh God. Oh. He is so fine. I'm like speechless. Oh, that's his plan. I let him knock me over. Oh. What is the parallel? <laughs> he just hung up on him. Basically, Toji is like wanting Gojo to be worn down before he attempts this. He's left. He's on his way. Are they gonna fight this soon? Fuck, people are like already here. Can you though? I think he's thinking too cock cockily. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> he called him out. Oh. oh, those were just like a little trick. Oh, hello, hello, dog. Is he making him see like a vision? Wait, how has he done this? Is he dead? Is that how you see him? Holy shit. Ghetto knew his every move. Oh. She's gonna be pissed. <laughs> oh no. Of course he's loving this. Oh my god. <laughs> Gojo. He actually kills me. <laughs> Not her giving her number to a high schooler. For fuck's sake. Uh, 
<laughs> she just picks her up like a cat. It is the safest option. Who the fuck are these people? Oh my god, is she gonna... Is she gonna fight? Her eyes... Ayo? Oh, she can fight? Get it? Oh, nice. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god, is she a sorcerer? Oh, that was ghetto. Okay. Damn, she's badass. Uh, what are they? Gojo. Oh, oh, they're. They're clones? Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, uh, so it's a cloning technique. Oh, he can switch. Hmm, okay. <laughs> yep. 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 Fuck it all. Oh, that shot! Are you kidding? Holy fuck. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, he teased him. Wait, I fail? Wait, I thought he was teased. What do you mean you failed? Oh, this is before he could do stuff like that. I mean, he's still powerful as fuck, though. I mean, I'm assuming it's before he could do that. <gasps> Wait, but she was, she was with Ghetto. A second ago, right? That episode felt like two seconds. The more that I watch this ending, the Ghetto Gojo stuff is like the symbolism of like the fish, the rain, that, that fucking shot. I read a thing. I read a lot of things apparently. I read a thing about how hands being in focus in like a lot of TV shows, anime, media, but not touching it like is supposed to symbolize the desire. I would just like to say, you know, I, I like I'm just saying like I'm just saying anyways. OK, wow. A lot to unpack from that episode as well. So first of all, we need to talk about Toji. He knows of Gojo and he knows that Gojo is protecting the vessel. He doesn't seem concerned about Ghetto which is interesting. It's like Gojo at this point is already more famous and he wants basically these other people that are after her to wear her down because he's semi aware that he might not be able to defeat Gojo, but I, like maybe someone with more brain cells needs to explain the parallel of like the boat race because I feel like that played some kind of like parallel to his thinking like am I interpreting it right to think that he's seeing that as a sign of luck and like 
He said, who knows? Like, who knows if I could beat him? Basically, we are regardlessly gearing up for a fight between Toji and Gojo, which I am scared of because Toji, uh... <laughs> Don't do that. You're too sexy to die. Uh -huh. Because, I mean, Gojo may be a high schooler and Toji may be an adult, but I don't know if he stands a chance. I am, however, excited to see Toji's abilities and how he fights. Um, the other thing that we need to unpack is the fact that he was asked about Megumi and he said, who's that? He has to, he knows, we know that he knows who his son is because we know that he sold him off. I wonder if at this point he has already sold him off. Well, he, I'm assuming that he hasn't because I think that's when Gojo actually meets Megumi. So he knows who he is. Why is he pretending to not know? Maybe he already has these like plans in his head and he's just being a, a dickhead and like pretending that his son doesn't exist because he doesn't have like any kind of emotional attachment to him. Um, Yeah, that's so fucked up. I mean, like I said, not dad of the year, daddy of the year though. <laughs> Ghetto's fight scene as well. Obviously, he was underestimated. I mean, him and Gojo are called the, the two strongest for a reason. Like, that guy was underestimating the fuck out of him to think that he wouldn't be able to do close combat. But yeah, that guy's life fucking flashed before his eyes. And I don't know what's going to go down in the next episode. Like, obviously, they're going to take the vessel back to Jujutsu High. But are they going to get there before Toji gets in the way? Also, what happened in that space of time where, like, the 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 main was with Ghetto and then now she's like attacked. I wonder if that's Toji or if that's someone else. I guess we'll find out, but oh, thank you so much for watching this with me. I'm really, really, really excited about this season. I'm enjoying every single second of it. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to um, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think about season two so far without manga spoilers, please. And yeah, I'd love to talk to you about it. If you want to, again, join my Patreon, I'd love to have you over there. And if you want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe. But yeah, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.